here on this Sunday morning. Uh, it serves me a great privilege to be able to be here with my blood father, uh, my father in the ministry. Uh, it is certainly a great pleasure to be able to be here with you all on this live experience for church this Sunday morning. Uh, the pastor wanted me to be able to give an announcement real quick, a quick announcement um, to other ministers or pastors that is associated with Wings of Love and or who's not associated with Wings of Love to be able to give you any type of guidance or help into the live cyber virtual experience of church service. Uh, my, my email for you to uh, reach out to me is ministeralvinjackson at gmail.com. Again, ministeralvinjackson at gmail.com. It's on the screen for you to be able to email me any questions or any way I can help you or even guide you in some type of way to make this live experience for church to be a great experience, to have people tuned in while they're eating their breakfast, while they're in their beds, while they're in their cars, wherever it is that they're enjoying the service. So I am here to help you uh, with anything that you may need. Uh, my wife, my wife who is coming to us today yes. to bring us a great word. Um, I've watched her prepare herself for the last uh, two weeks since she's a or it may be in three weeks uh, that she was preaching. And so she is in dire, dire, dire need to be able to give you this word. She told me she can't wait to be able to give you this word. She is a graduate of U of M uh, Dearborn, where she has her master in communication. She also is a director of communications for Wayne County. Uh, so I know with her communication degree, she has all the words and vocabulary to be able to display this word that God has placed on her heart to give to us. So I'm going to turn it over to our pastor. Uh, wherever you are, you make the loudest noise you can. You clap your hands, you scream, you put in the comments, you like, you hit the heart button, you hit a few emojis for our pastor. Those who are watching, who are first, and visitors who are your first time watching, I introduce to some and present to others our pastor over at Wings of Love, over at 17133 John R., Pastor Alvin Jackson Sr. God bless you. Thank you, Minister Alvin Jackson. My right. son certainly is a blessing uh, to have father and son. You know that commercial that come on. So I just want to... Uh, share with you that this is youth day. We ought to remember our youth. They're not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. Yes. And my son uh, mentioned uh, 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 not too long ago about Generation X, but let me say to the baby boomers, we do have to acknowledge Generation of, generational X uh, because we need their energy. We need their excitement. Yes, we appreciate the seasoned saints, uh, the elders, for your experience, but we do need our young people. Let's train and teach our young people now uh, for ministry and in the church. I believe you call us what? Generation Next, I believe. Isn't it's it? Generation Next. I like that better. That's a better word than Generation X because we don't want to cross them out. We want them to cross over. Y'all feel me in here and get involved in church service and in the mission uh, of the church and to carry out the great commission that our Christ, our Lord, left for us back here. Boy, I'm excited uh, just as well. I know my son is uh, to introduce the song and present to others. Uh, Tiffany, Minister Tiffany Chanel Jackson. I know that her grandfather is smiling down perhaps yes, uh, from yes, heaven yes. Uh, to know that he has has a granddaughter preaching the word. Amen. Some of you being out there don't want the women to preach, but let me tell you something. We ought not to be battling, not to be no conflict because there's no male and female in the kingdom of God. And we really appreciate the women's ministry too as well as the men. And so get ready for this profound and powerful word that, that she's going to bring. And I ask that you would give her your undivided attention. God bless you. God love you. And so do I. Now, hugs and kisses, ways of love. We love you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jay and Minister Jackson for that great introduction. Pastor Jay, I certainly have big shoes to fill um, with my grandfather. So if I could just get an inch of what he had, I would be certainly, certainly grateful. Wings, I am ecstatic to be able to minister to you all this morning. It's my prayer 
that you all are staying safe and staying sane in such unprecedented times. If there are any visitors on the live this morning, allow me to be the first one to welcome you and to say thank you. With so many virtual services going on, you literally could be worshiping with anybody anywhere in the world, but you saw fit to be here with us. So Wings, why don't you do me a favor? Go ahead and drop a welcome to Wings of Love in the comments so that our visitors experience that traditional warm Wings of Love welcome. Last Fourth Sunday, Minister Alvin Jackson said something that I've been thinking about ever since he said it. He reminded us that God is not limited by time and space. And I started thinking that even though we're not able to be together and worship together in the physical church building, that that does not mean that we cannot have an encounter with God. That doesn't mean that God can't show up wherever we are and show out for us. So I want to challenge you guys to silence every distraction this morning that could keep you from having a supernatural encounter with our Father. I want you to block out anything around you that would interfere with your connection to Him. I want you to begin to welcome the King of Glory into your space this morning. I want you to invite His peace and His provision and His healing to come into the room with you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your favor, your loving kindness toward us, oh God. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray that you will touch their hearts and their minds and make them susceptible to the word that is going to go forth. Father, I pray that you will touch their ears and make them sensitive to your voice so that when you speak, they know that it's you speaking. Father, I pray that you will give them hearts to be obedient towards your word. Father, I pray that you would crucify every ounce of flesh and that you would sanctify your spirit within me so that you get the glory from this word this morning. These blessings and others I ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. If you all would turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, that's Luke 46 through 49. Um, it's on the screen if you don't have your Bibles. And it reads, so why do you keep calling me? Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say, I will show you what it is like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise up and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and does not obey it's like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against the house, it will collapse into a heap of ruin. The word of God is blessed. And I'd like to take a moment to just speak to you from the topic of built from the ground up. You know what often leaves me perplexed? I mean, like it really flabbergasts me. It's when someone comes to me for advice and I take the time to discuss their situations and their problems and their issues with them and I offer my advice only for them to come back later on to tell me that they didn't actually take the advice that I had given them. And if you're anything like me, I'm sure you have a trusted, circle of friends and or family who you all often confide in one another and you share things with one another. And I'm sure you have spent hours and sometimes a period of days speaking about a situation or situations and offering your wise counsel to these individuals only for them to come back to you days, weeks, months later and tell you that they did not take your advice and that they did the exact opposite of what it was that you advised them to do, only for them to end up in a situation that is worse than the situation that they originally came to you in. Or perhaps many of us have children, and it's our goal as 
parents to direct our children down the correct path in life, but inevitably there are going to be times when our children are going to stray away and they're going to be disobedient to what it is that we have instructed them to do only to come back to us as parents asking us to put the pieces of the puzzle back together that they shattered by not doing what it was that we told them to do in the first place. Well, if you can relate to any of these situations that I just explained, then certainly you should be able to relate to Jesus in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, when he asked the question, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? It's important for us to recognize uh, something about that title, Lord. Uh, a Lord is a person who is worthy of unconditional obedience. The title Lord is reserved for those of us who willingly and freely allow God to rule and to reign over our lives. But that reign and that rule cannot take place without our obedience. We go to him in times of affliction and we yell, uh, Lord, help me. Uh, Lord, have mercy on me. Uh, Lord, if you would just show up for me. Uh, it's me. It's me. Oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But we're not looking for him to be our Lord. What we're looking for is for him to be our savior. Uh, we want someone to hide us from our consequences. We're looking for a bailout. We want him to come and clean up the mess that we have created. We don't go to him in repentance, looking for deliverance because deliverance requires freedom. And we don't want freedom, but we also don't want to suffer. Instead, what we go to him looking for is grace. We go to him looking for a temporary fix, looking for some instant relief. If we would just recognize that if we had just followed his instructions in the first place, that perhaps it would not have ended up the way that it ended up. We wouldn't have ended ourselves in this particular particular predicament if we had just been obedient to our God. Uh, but the thing about us is we don't want to live in obedience. We just want to make sure that we've got enough grace and enough mercy to cover us in our disobedience. But it's important for us to understand that when we disobey God, we forfeit our right to call him our Lord. And if we allow our obedience to let, then everything else in our lives will follow along with it. Jesus is likening our effort and preparing ourselves to weather life storms in Luke chapter 6 to that of someone who is building a house. He gives us a series of if-then statements. He says that if you come to me, listen to me, and obey me, then this will make you solid. He tells us that a person who makes a conscious and continuous effort to dig deep is one who builds on a solid foundation. And to the contrary, he says that if you don't listen to me, if you don't obey me, then this will leave you destructed, decaying, and devastated. See, Jesus is providing us with the blueprint for building our being. And it's important to know a few things about a blueprint so you understand what it is that Jesus is doing. A blueprint is something that is extremely detailed. A blueprint outlines the specifications of what it is that we're building. It tells us the quality of the materials that are being used to build our structure. A blueprint is what determines the construction schedule. Uh, a blueprint also outlines the building code so that we are aware that we are in compliance in what it is that we're building. But the issue with many of us is that we have already created our own blueprints. We already feel like we have all the materials that we need, that we have all the finances that we need. We have all the wisdom, all the connections, all the manpower that we need to be who it is that we want to be. But allow me to ask you a question. What about who Jesus wants you to be? See, our Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. The thing about an architect is that if he does not 
familiarize himself with a blueprint, then he will never be good at what it is that he's building because he doesn't even understand what it is that he's building. In Jesus's blueprint, he's telling us that it's not enough just for us to listen to his teachings, but we actually have to obey them. It's not enough just to be hearers, but we must be doers also. Obedience is our key ingredient when we're building from the ground up. And our very first step, anytime we build something from the ground up is to establish a foundation. The thing about a good foundation is that it is what supports and holds the structure above ground. It is what bears the load of the building. A good foundation should last you forever. Well, you do know that we are building something from the ground up, that we're building lifestyles and families, that we're building ministries and legacies. We're building our reputations and our characters. We're building communities and generations. Yes, certainly we're building from the ground up. Each one of our life's experiences is like a set of bricks placed one on top of the other, and each impacts the sturdiness of the one that comes behind it. So if you are not laid your foundation on a solid foundation, then everything else will be weakened. Jesus tells us, though, that before we can even start to lay our foundation, that the first step is to dig deep. And what I learned when I was preparing my sermon is that there are some buildings that you can build using a shallow foundation. And there are other buildings that require you to have a deep foundation. And if you stick with me, I promise you that I'm going to help somebody this morning because it's the purpose of the building that determines the foundation that you are to use, whether shallow or whether deep. And you have to understand the number of loads that the building will have to bear when you're choosing a foundation. A load is a force that comes against the building and the building must be able to resist that force without experiencing any catastrophic stress or damage to the structure. So what am I saying? The deeper your calling, uh, the greater your anointing, the greater your purpose, uh, the greater your mission, the deeper you're going to have to dig because they're going to be greater, greater, greater forces that are going to come against you, greater loads that you're going to have to prepare yourselves to build. Well, how do I know that? Because in John 16 and 33, it tells us that in the world we shall have tribulations, but the Lord has already overcome the world. Psalm 34 and 19 tells me that my righteousness comes with a companion. It tells me that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Galatians 6 and 9, we are instruct instructed not to become weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. So this tells me that undoubtedly along the way, there are going to be some loads that we are going to have to prepare ourselves to resist. So won't you take this moment to type in the comments, hit the like button, share my sermon. If you agree with what I'm saying and tell somebody that now is not the time to be shallow. Uh, tell somebody else that I've got some loads that I must be prepared to bear. Now is the time for us to dig deep and to establish our solid foundation. Now is not the time for us to only log on to Instagram and YouTube on Wednesday nights and Sunday evenings uh, to get a little piece of the word. Now is not the time for us to just log on to our Bible app to repost the verse of the day to our social media accounts. We can't afford to have empty prayer lives. We can't afford to just sit silent and not dare to open up our mouths and witness about the goodness of Jesus. We cannot afford to get lazy in this season. We cannot afford to become disobedient in this season because, see, things in this current season have already become lax. People are laid off, they're furloughed, they're sitting at home, they're lounging, and in some cases, they have even become neglectful. But this is not the season for laziness. No, see, this is the season for sowing. This, this is the season 
for building. But see, the thing about lackadaisicalness is that some of us have already been operating in it. Some of us have already been surviving off this little part-time worship and quarterly church attendance. But now is the time to show and prove. This is the time to show God just how authentic our walk with him really is. And the only way that we're going to prove our authenticity to the Father is through our obedience to his word. Jesus tells us that we have to dig deep. So whenever a builder is preparing to build the foundation, they start by digging deep into the soil. Well, I've got news. We're the builders and his word is the soil. You see, in Psalm 119 and 11, we're told that we have to hide his word in our hearts so that we might not sin against him. The beauty about hiding his word in our hearts is that it reveals God in our lives. Digging deep into God's word is what leads to our obedience. And our obedience is what keeps us in fellowship with our father. Digging deep requires us to have a connection to him. But in order to have a connection to him, we must be in communication with him. If you look at our text, before we ever get into digging deep or laying our foundation, Jesus tells us that we have to connect to him. He says, you got to come to me. You have to listen to my teachings. Well, Tiffany, how do I connect with him? How do I... Uh, find myself in communication with him. Well, anytime you pray and you yield yourself, that is forming that connection. Anytime you give God praise, that forms a connection. Anytime you worship him, that forms a connection. Anytime that you pick up your Bibles and you read and study and meditate on his word, that forms a connection. But beyond all of that, anytime you allow his word to come off the pages of that Bible and manifest themselves in your life and you become a physical representation of what it says in that Bible, you solidify your connection with the Father because your obedience is a direct extension of your connection. It's the depth of your obedience that's going to determine the depth of your foundation and your obedience must be built on nothing else other than the word of God. And it's important for me to mention to you that obedience seems simple until pride gets in the way. It seems simple until lust gets in the way. Simple until grief starts to set up camp. It seems simple until that generational curse that you thought you had broken uh, starts to creep back up on you. It seems simple until that stronghold is not as easy for you to get loose from as you thought it would be. There are undoubtedly going to be some things that come into your life and work hard to try and to weaken your connection with your father and force you to become disobedient. But you have got to make up in your mind that upon this rock, I'll build my church. You have got to be committed to blocking out every distraction, to demolishing every argument that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, to silencing every ungodly voice, bringing every thought into captivity. You've got to learn how to plead the blood of Jesus and keep on digging. We have got to stop seeing obedience as a chore. And we have got to recognize obedience for the beautiful gifts that it has brought to us through Christ Jesus. It was Christ's obedience that brought us grace that brought us mercy, it brought us righteousness, it brought us eternal life, and it's our obedience that unlocks God's favor, it's our um, obedience that opens doors, it's our obedience that keeps us from getting stuck and being stagnant. So we have got to make up our minds that no matter how difficult being obedient may become, at times we will be tempted, but we have got to learn how to resist the temptation to just be like everybody else. We have got to resist the temptation to want to march to the beat of our own drum. We have got to make up in our minds and understand that God has given us authority to walk in holiness and obedience. But the issue with us Christians is that instead of walking in authority, we walk around in weakness. We walk around defeated. We 
walk around with our heads hung down low, but God has given you the authority to speak to mountains. God has given you authority to trample over demons. God has given you authority to crush the head of the enemy. God has given you authority to rise above iniquity. So don't you dare sit there and tell me that you don't have enough authority to live your life in obedience to the word of God. After all, I want you to tell me what has disobedience ever done for you? Well, good thing I read my Bible because I can tell you what disobedience have done for some of my friends at the Bible. It was disobedience that ended Jonah up in the belly of the whale. Yeah, it was disobedience that ended Egypt suffering from all of those horrible plagues. It was disobedience that caused the children of Israel to wander in the wilderness for all of those years. It was disobedience that welcomed death and sin into our world. It was disobedience that caused famines and floods and storms and tore apart families. Oh, good thing I don't just read my Bible, but I also like to testify. Let me tell you what disobedience has done for me. The only thing it ever did was end me up in more self-destructive behavior, more sin, more hurt, more pain. It wasn't until I made up in my mind that I was going to dig deep, that I was able to see the beauty behind obedience, that I was able to see the beauty behind being obedient to God's word. Now, I think now is the time for you to start typing in the comments and tell somebody dig deeper dig deeper you tell somebody hit the like button and tell them it's time to dig deeper because it's your digging that's going to lead to you laying your foundation so I told y'all before I I, I started working on this sermon I had no idea about building anything and I had to do my research so I found out that it's not just your foundation that you use when you're building something from the ground up, but it's also something called footing. And the footing actually comes before the foundation. And what the Lord revealed to me is that it's our obedience that's our foundation, but it's his word that's our footing. Uh, he said, uh, your obedience is going to sustain your house but my word is going to sustain you. Uh, he said, your obedience is not going to stop the storms from coming, but my word is going to sustain you when they come. So I dare you to tell somebody that a storm is not the time for you to start building, but you've got to be ready when it comes. You've got to have the word of God stored up in your heart and prepared to back you up. See, uh, when COVID-19 stepped on the scene, if it wasn't for the word of God that was stored up in my heart, then depression would have knocked me out. Anxiety would have overcome me. Fear would have had me bowed. But the word of God that was stored up in my heart, it reassured me that though a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, that nothing shall come near me. And the word of God that was stored up in my heart, it encouraged me because it reminded me that he has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. See, I've laid my foundation on a firm and stable rock. I've, I've laid my foundation on a strong and sturdy rock, on a solid rock. And the thing that you must know about that word solid is that it refers to a being or an object having three dimensions. I hope y'all not missing your shout. An object or a being having three dimensions. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better trinity other than the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that I would want to have on my side when the storms of life start to rage and beat against this house. A, a better trinity that I would want to have my foundation laid on when the storms start tearing away at this house, when tears are streaming down my face, when my body is stricken with pain, when I need guidance, when I need direction, where I'm looking for a light unto my path when I feel like I have no other resources and nobody else will do, uh, when I need to remain steadfast and unmovable, when I need to be hidden in our refuge and our fortress, I can't think of a, a better trinity to have when I need to be comforted than to be comforted by the supreme comforter, uh, to be standing on the precious cornerstone or our sure foundation. What confidence it is to have the power of the ultimate intercessor who's seated at the right hand of the Father. Won't you tell somebody that my foundation is 
three dimensional, go ahead, hit that like button and tell everybody you know, my foundation is three dimensional. So that means that I've been assured that no matter the storm, my foundation will sustain us. I told you that I read my Bible. So when Joshua and the Israelites were marching around Jericho, it was their obedience that made those walls come crashing down. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, it was his obedience to the call that the Lord had given him that freed them from the Egyptians. Peter walked on water because he was obedient to God's command to come. And even when he started to sleep because his faith failed him, Jesus reached out his hand and lifted him up. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son on the altar of obedience. He didn't think about the emotions that his son had to be experiencing in that moment. He didn't think about the trouble that he would be in with his wife when he got back home. Uh, he denied even his own emotions that he had to be experiencing in that moment. God had spoken and it was what it was because God has assured us that our well-built foundations will cause us to stand firm if only we be obedient. But to the contrary, there are some people who aren't going to make it out of the same storms that we're going to survive. There are some things that we're going to be able to weather and they're going to wither because they're less prepared. The very thing that God delivers you from is the very thing that might cause somebody else to die. The very thing that God saves you from is the very thing that might destroy somebody else. You see, the Red Sea delivered the children of Israel, but the Red Sea also killed the Egyptian army. Uh, the same thing that God gives you grace to endure will be too heavy of a burden for somebody else to bear. Because see, when your foundation is solid, it won't matter what storms rage, what storms beat against the building, because you're going to remain anchored in Jesus. Uh, where there was once low self-esteem, there'll be confidence. Where there were once financial hardships, there's going to be an overflow. Those suicidal thoughts that you used to have, there'll be no match for the giver of life. When your foundation is solid, even your storms are going to have to elevate themselves in order to take you out. My Bible says that the floodwaters have to rise up to beat against the house. So that means that your foundation has already given you an advantage over your enemies. Your foundation has already given you an advantage over your storms. It has already given you an advantage over the spiritual wickedness and high places. See, my foundation has me claiming to be more than a, a conqueror. It has me claiming to be above and not beneath. It has me claiming to be the head and not the tail. It's got me feeling like I can do all things. It, it has me declaring that I've I've got peace in my mind, that I've got joy in my spirit, that I've got love in my heart. My foundation is setting me free. It's causing the chains to be broken. It's destroying the yoke. So allow me to ask you one more question. What is it that your foundation is doing for you? Is it exalting you above the enemy? Is it making your crooked path straight? Uh, perhaps it's bringing you blessed assurance. Uh, surely it's giving you some wisdom uh, along the way. Does your foundation have you feeling like you've got greatness down on the inside of you? Does it have you feeling like you've got perfect peace in the midst of chaos? Does it have you declaring that you've got healing in your body? Uh, has your foundation told you that even though you're in the middle of a pandemic, that the Lord has the ability to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that even you won't have room enough to receive? See, my God has the ability to speak to the storms and cause it to be still. My God has the ability uh, to make my foundation as solid as I need it to be. So somebody needs to open up their mouths and you need to testify about the goodness of your foundation. Somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to hear about how God brought you out. Uh, somebody needs to hear about how God is pulling you through. They need to hear about how he caused walls to fall and how he moved mountains out of your way. They need to hear about how God saved your soul. They need to hear about the details of what it is that your foundation has done for you. And even though I may not know your whole story, what I do know is that if you built on a solid foundation, that it's going to last you forever. Because my Bible tells me that heaven and earth may pass away, but my word is going to last forever. 
So as long as you're building your foundation on his word through your obedience, you shall not be overtaken. You might shake, but you won't seek. You might tremble, but you certainly will not fall. You might be struck down, but you won't be destroyed. Why? Because you got a three-dimensional foundation. I told you earlier about blueprints and how you needed a blueprint to understand what it is that you're building. Well, the important thing for you to know about a blueprint is that it's only two dimensional. So until you add Jesus into the mix, you'll never understand the full picture. Until you add Jesus in the mix, you'll never really know who you're supposed to be. Until you add Jesus in the mix, you'll never really know where you're going. You won't know your true purpose. You won't know your true calling until Jesus is added added in the mix because he's the one that causes all things to work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And I know that some of us may not have that solid foundation, but I hear good news for you that it's never too late for you to find Jesus. See, the Bible says that if you confess in your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. So all you have to do is just open up your mouth and confess that, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. I believe that Jesus is the savior of the world who died on the cross, who rose again for my redemption. It is my sincere prayer that you were blessed by the word of God this morning. Well, we've come to the part in the service where we can all participate. It is giving time. Uh, remember that we do have obligations. Even though we are not in the physical church building, we do still have expenses that we are responsible for. So remember that now is the time to give your tithe and your offering. If I were, was a blessing to you this morning, here's your opportunity to also sow back into my ministry. My cash app and PayPal information will also be on the screen with the three ways that you can give your tithe and your offering. To Pastor Jackson, thank you so much for this opportunity to minister to your people. I never take it lightly. I am truly, truly, truly grateful for that. Uh, my son, Malachi, is behind the camera this morning. He has produced this entire message. So won't you guys go ahead and drop a couple likes for Malachi, put a couple comments in there so that he can see the love and feel the love from all of you this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this message. I pray that it would transform the lives of your children. I pray that it would encourage them to live obedient lives. I pray that it will encourage them to dig a little bit deeper in your word. I pray that it will encourage them to draw near to you and to strengthen their communication with you. Father, I pray that until we meet again, that you would just set your angels of protection, give them charge over your children and ask that they keep them safe and covered. In times of COVID-19, I declare that no sickness shall come near their dwelling, God. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, that I pray. Amen and thank God. Bye guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and be blessed.